Are you curious about the final stages of creating a painting series? In this video, I'll take you on a step-by-step -step journey of completing my abstract painting series and give you all the details. You might have watched me as I've painted my latest series. I did make a playlist. If you want to catch up on that, I'll put it up here. It's very satisfying once you actually finish your paintings. But after the painting process, there's still a lot of steps before they're finished completely. I'm going to show you my process of varnishing, framing, photographing and so on. Let's get into it. Signing. These days, a lot of artists don't like signing their paintings on the front. I still like to do it though, but I only use my initials and I make it as subtle as possible by using a colour that's almost the same as the background. So I take care to mix a colour that's perfect. Photographing. After I sign the paintings, I take an initial round of photos without the frame. The main reason I do this is because when I take pictures of the frame paintings, they are already varnished and sometimes the varnish can cause glare, even though I only use a satin varnish. I take the photos next to a window and put a reflector on the opposite side. Here I'm using a white piece of foam board. I take the picture from above and try to get it as straight as possible. I'm using my DSLR camera with a 50mm lens and shoot in raw format. Isolation coat. Next, I apply what is called an isolation coat. It basically seals the painting. It's a clear layer of medium between the painting and the varnish. So if someone wants to remove the varnish I apply later on, the painting stays undisturbed. For this isolation coat, I use soft gel thinned with water. Two parts gel, one part water, and I apply it with a brush. If you don't want to see the brush strokes, you could also use a trowel or some sort of scraper instead of a brush to smooth out the medium. And instead of the soft gel with water, you could also use Gloss Medium, GAC 100 or Golden even makes a product that's called Isolation Coat. I've tried that before and it works very well, but it's a lot more expensive than the soft gel with water. Let this coat dry for at least two weeks before you apply the varnish. Varnishing. To varnish your paintings, there are again many options and you don't even have to varnish if you don't want to. Back in the day, we used varnish because often a painting would hang over the fireplace and get very sooty. You could then remove the varnish, including all the dirt, to clean the painting and apply a new layer of varnish and the painting would look like new. I still like to apply a removable varnish because I feel that my painting is better protected that way. It also adds UV protection. I use a brush on varnish, but you could also use spray varnish. The satin varnishes are still too glossy for me, but a matte varnish is too flat. So I mix my own with five parts satin, one part matte. I use a soft, largish brush that I only use for varnishing, so there's no chance of it having any paint residue. I applied two layers, one horizontally and the second one vertically. I heard that that works better to avoid reflections once the painting hangs on the wall. Labels. On the back of my paintings, I stick a label with the name of the painting, year I finished it, the dimensions, the medium I used and a little bit about my process and the story behind the painting. I print those at my home printer and stick them to the back with spray mount. Painting frames. I think of frames as part of the artwork, so I take great care when preparing the frames. I choose one of the main colours of the artwork for the frame colour, usually one that takes up a lot of space near the edge of the painting. I mix a small batch of each frame colour and always keep a little bit of it until the piece is sold, in case I have to touch up the frame at some point. I mix the paint with water to make a thinner consistency which shows less brush strokes. Then begins a long process of painting part of the frame at a time, letting it dry and so on. I apply at least two coats of paint using a soft brush. I wait at least four hours for each section to dry before I turn the frame around and move on to the next one. After each coat of paint, I carefully sand with steel wool. I do this outside because it gets very messy with steel wool dust everywhere. A great tip for cleanup is to use a magnet wrapped in cloth, which will pick up the dust easily. I also wipe the frames before each new coat 
with a tack cloth. I then apply two coats of furniture varnish. Again, I create my own sheen level by mixing flat and satin varnish in equal parts. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Framing. Once both painting and frame had a good chance to dry properly, I join them to create the final artwork. To raise the panels in the frames, I stick wooden dowels to the backs of the painting with wood glue. On the back of the frame, I mark the center of those dowels and drill tiny holes where the screws go. I then add screws to secure the painting. I also add D-rings about one third down from the top and add picture wire so it's ready to be hung. Certificates of Authenticity. For each artwork, I make a certificate of authenticity. This is usually more common for limited edition prints, but I think it's a nice touch and makes the artwork feel even more special. Final Photographs. I like to style a scene that my paintings hang in. Books and interesting ceramics or plants always look great. Natural light is best for taking pictures, especially on an overcast day when the light is softer. Put a reflector on the opposite side to the window. You can use any large flat surface. I usually use a piece of foam board or polystyrene. Alternatively, you can use studio lights with soft boxes. I use my DSLR camera with a 50mm lens and shoot in both RAW and JPEG format. I also take a few close-up photos to capture the details. Editing photos. For editing the photos, I use Affinity Photo. I do have more experience with Photoshop, but Affinity Photo is just more cost efficient for me at the moment. I adjust the exposure, white balance, and if necessary, individual colors, so I can get the photo looking as close to the painting as possible. For square paintings, I also make sure they are perfectly square in the photo. Uploading. Final step, of course, is to upload everything to my website. I create new product pages for the paintings, add product descriptions, photos, and create their own section on my website, ready for the collection launch. If you're interested in seeing the final results, those paintings are now available on my website. I'll put a link in the description box below so you can have a look. You can also watch the whole process of me creating the series in the playlist I made up here. Thanks and bye bye.